In section 2.8, proportions and similar figures, the goals for this lesson are to find missing lengths in similar figures and use similar figures when measuring indirectly. So first of all, similar figures have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. And what we're going to do in this lesson is use proportions to find missing side lengths and similar figures. So we'll have a pair of figures and we'll note a certain number of side lengths and we're missing the, the fourth one. So then we just use a proportion, set it up, and solve for the variable and we will find our missing side. The symbol, the squiggly right there, that means is similar to. So whenever you see that symbol in between two figures, you know that they're similar to each other. Remember, similar means same shape but not necessarily the same size. And important to remember is the fact that when you name similar figures, the order of that naming is important. In example one, we have these two triangles and we know that they're similar to each other. By the name of the two similar triangles, we know that there are certain sides that are corresponding. So let's just name them right now, BC right here, and EF. As you can see, they're in the same position. They are corresponding. And the other pair of corresponding sides are AB, and DE. So let's set up a proportion and solve for the missing length. We have BC over EF. As you can see, they are corresponding to each other. And then the other pair of corresponding sides are AB over DE. So in that proportion, the top two sides of the proportion, BC and AB, are, are from the same triangle, and same thing with EF and DE. So now let's plug in the sides. BC is 16, EF is 12, AB is 10, and DE we do not know. So let's just keep it as DE. Now the easiest approach to solving this is to use the cross-multiplying method. So we have 16 DE equals 12 times 10. Using the 10 trick, we can just make that 120 on the right, 16 DE. How do we get the DE by itself? We have to divide by 16 on both sides. And DE equals whatever 120 divided by 16 is, and that would be 7.5. So that is the missing side length. In example two, we have this picture, and this is what's happening. The sun's rays strike the building and the girl at the same angle, forming two similar triangles shown. How tall is the building? We're going to be setting up a portion again. And let's have the girl's shadow on top. And the building shadow below. And then on the top of the other side of the proportion, we're going to have the girl's height and building height on bottom. So let's fill in our givens. The girl's shadow is 3 feet right here. The building shadow is 15 right here. The girl's height is 5, and the building height, we do not know, it's x. Cross multiply. 3x equals 15 times 5. 15 times 5 is 75. 3x equals 75. Get the x by itself, divide both sides by 3, and you get x equals 25, and it's measured in feet. So the height of the building is 25 feet. Okay, flip your note sheet over to the back. Let's define what a scale drawing is. It is a drawing that is similar to an actual object or place. There are a few examples. Floor plans for a house. 
blueprints, also for buildings, and maps, places you want to go. A scale is the ratio of any length on the drawing to the actual length, which is always the same. So a scale is something you're going to see on one of those drawings. The floor plan, the blueprint, the maps, they all have a certain scale because obviously those drawings are not life size. That's the purpose of the drawings is that they're like a condensed version of the actual place or object. Example three, we're going down to Florida. What is the actual distance from Jacksonville to Orlando? Use the ruler to measure the distance from Jacksonville to Orlando on the map. So here's Jacksonville and here's Orlando. How far apart are they on the ruler? Well as you can see there's one inch, it's a little bit past one inch and if you look at the measurement for the one inch, the one inch is cut up into four equal parts and there's another equal part after that so that would be 1.25 inches. And the scale is in the bottom left corner of that map and that's definitely going to be useful. So we're going to write the scale first, one inch over 110 miles. What this means is every inch on this map represents 110 miles in real life if you actually went to Florida. Now on the other side we are given the 1.25 inches which is the distance on the map and then we do not know the actual distance so let's make that x cross multiply. We get 1x, that's just x. x equals 110 times 1.25, type that into your calculator. And when you do so, you get x equals 137.5 measured in miles. So that is the actual distance from Jacksonville to Orlando. Moving on, a scale model is a three-dimensional model that is similar to a three-dimensional object. So what we just talked about, the drawings, they're not three-dimensional, but scale models are. And in our last example, we have a giant model heart shown. The heart is the ideal size for a person who is 170 feet tall. About what size would you expect the heart of a man who is 6 feet tall to be? So the thing that we don't know is the height of the actual heart of a, a regular sized man. So let's set up this proportion. Height of giant heart over height of man's heart equals height of giant over height of man. As you can see the top part of both sides of the proportion is about the giant and the bottom part is about the man so you need to make sure you keep that like that format. Now let's plug in our givens. Height of giant heart is 14 feet. Height of man's heart we don't know x and height of giant is 170 feet and height of man is 6. Cross multiply like usual. We get 170x equals 14 times 6. 14 times 6 is 84. Divide both sides by 170 and you get x equals approximately 0.49 Feet. So that is the height of the heart of the normal sized man. And you may be wondering um, what kind of inches that would be, and it's just half a foot, so it's approximately six inches or so. Okay, that completes this lesson. You can try the lesson check if you'd like, and if you'd like to wait until we do similar problems in class, that is a okay.